Mohari village is rich in natural resources like land, forests, and water. In spite of these precious natural resources, Mohari village people are compelled to live in darkness. The water of the Darkari River flows nearby the village. The time has come to utilize this water resource to generate electricity, bringing light and development opportunities to the village. For that, Ritz Nepal developed a new modular Pico Hydro power plant technology concept and in close partnership with the Mohari village families, work together to generate electricity from their Dakari River. As the saying goes, the end of any work should be more beautiful than the beginning. This has become a reality for the Mohari village through the modular Pico Hydro power plant project. The following video tries to show and highlight where the journey together has come so far. We have built galvanized wire mesh cages and fill them with stones to protect our sedimentation pond and sedimentation tank from high river waters and to control the flow of water we need for the Pico Hydro Power Turbine plant. They lead debris, wood branches and stones to one side and just let the required amount of clean river water through to the sedimentation pond. From here, the sedimentation pond starts, with the water flowing slower, separating the water and the sand, so that only clean water flows towards the sedimentation tank. Next is the sluice gate through which the water, free of any sedimentation, flows. We open it so much that enough water flows through to run the six turbines at the defined power output. Any excess water flows back to the river. Any wood pieces, leaves, and floating debris from upstream river will drift away with the water overflow. We clean the sedimentation tank every day from small debris such as leaves. We built this net strainer to clean the water surface easily. See how easy and quick we can clean the water surface from any small debris, like leaves and floating dirt in the sedimentation tank. This high-density polyethylene, or HDPE pipe, is 2 meters long with a diameter of 200 millimeters, and it acts like a filter. We drilled 1,610 holes, each with a diameter of 8 millimeters, into it. The reason for these holes is to prevent dirt or obstacles from entering the penstock pipe in which the water flows down to the nozzle and turbines. Here, you can see small pieces of leaves and wood particles being kept away from entering the HDPE filter by some of the 8mm holes. There are enough holes in the HDPE filter that even if 60% of the holes are blocked by debris, the filter still lets enough water into the penstock to power all the turbines. It is part of the operator's daily task to come to the sedimentation tank to check and clean the HDPE filter holes. Through the 200mm filter HDPE pipe, water flows down to the turbines. Any excess water will flow through the two 180mm diameter HTPE overflow pipes. Further, any on the surface floating small debris, wood particles or leaves are sucked through the overflow pipes, keeping the water in the sedimentation tank clean and safe for the turbines. From this 2 meter long 200mm diameter HTPE filter intake pipe, the water flows inside the 490 meter long penstock down to the turbine house. The land ground level is hardly ever straight, it goes up and down. So, when needed, we either dig into the ground or build up a stone wall to position the 490 meter long HDPE penstock pipe, making sure the pipes are safe and the water inside the penstock flows at a steady slope down to the turbine house. The land the penstock HDPE pipe is going through is never level or evenly sloped. Rather, the land goes up and down from the sedimentation tank down to the turbine house. So, at times, we have to dig into the ground to bury the HDPE penstock pipe around 500 millimeters deep. And at times, we have to build a stone wall to keep the even slope of the HDPE penstock pipe. <laughs> The total length of the penstock pipe from the sedimentation tank to the turbine house 
is 490 meters, with a total height difference of 50 meters. So, the upper one third of the penstock length, where the pressure is low, we use 200 millimeter diameter 2.5 kilogram per centimeter squared HDPE pipe. For the middle third of the penstock pipe, we use 4 kilogram per centimeter squared pipes. The last third of the penstock, leading down to the turbine house, has to withstand the highest pressure, up to 5 bar. Therefore, we use 200 millimeter diameter HDPE pipes with a pressure rating of 6 kilogram per square centimeters. The water flows from the sedimentation tank down to the turbine house through 98 HDPE pipes, each 5 meters long. The welded joints create a small pressure drop. Therefore, the actual pressure at the 6 Pelton turbines, despite the 50 meter geographical height difference between the sedimentation tank and the turbine house, is 47 meters, which is equivalent to 4.7 bar, for the electricity power generation. The Mohari Village Hydro Power Plant is a modular Pico Hydro Power Plant with six Pelton turbines, the first of its kind in Nepal. The efficient, lightweight and easily maintainable Pelton turbines use runners with multiple permanent magnet poles, housed in a recycled plastic housing bodies. Though only one turbine would meet the village's power demand today for all basic indoor lighting and phone charging, we installed six turbines to prove the concept of modularity, which means the hydro power plant can grow along with the village's power demand increases and ability to pay for the electricity generated over the years to come, from initially one turbine up to ten turbines with the same infrastructure already in place today. For the 300 meter long transmission line from the turbine house to the powerhouse in the village, we have used strongly insulated armored copper cables, which we buried about 500 millimeters underground. Once a month, we grease each turbine's bearing rolls. Once a month, we stop each turbine, one at a time, to check the Pelton turbine, the nozzle, and bearing, and clean them if needed. While the stopped turbine is being checked, the other five turbines continue to run, generating electricity. As you can see, I stopped one turbine with the other five turbines continuing to run, not interfering with each other in any way. Now I will open the plexiglass cover of the turbine and see if there is any debris inside the nozzles or the turbine, if the turbine runner is okay without unexpected abrasions, and if the turbine is running easy on the bearing without increased clearance in the bearing. I spin the Pelton turbine runner to check if it runs free and smooth, or if there is increased friction or metallic noise due to increased bearing friction. Also, this allows me to check easily if the bearing is still ok, and has not too large a clearance between the turbine and bearing rolls. The maximal water flow for all six turbines is approximately 20 liters per second, with 47 meter head, generating 6.6 .6 kilowatts electricity. The water flows after the turbines from the turbine house to the outflow back into the river through a 30 meter long, 225 millimeter diameter, 2.5 kilogram per square centimeter underground buried HDPE pipe. Inside this box, all the power is joined and conditioned to be sent as 300 volt DC power from all six turbines to the powerhouse in the village. The 300 meter underground buried armored cable starts from here and goes directly to the powerhouse in the village. The high voltage DC power generated by all six turbines is sent through the 300 meter long, half meter underground buried armored power cable to the powerhouse in the village without any problem to anyone. No trees or expensive steel poles or exposed cables have to be used. All is safe, secure to use and sustainable for many years to come. हमरो यो टर्बाइन आउट देखी पावर आउट सुमत है हमरो तीन से मीटर लामो From the turbine house to the power house, we have laid an underground buried armored cable 500 millimeters underground, so that the farmers can plow, plant and grow their crops, be it wheat, 
barley, or potatoes anytime without a problem. The half meter deep buried armored cable is going through this field from the turbine house to the powerhouse. It does not disturb the farmer in any way. He can plow his fields with his bulls, can plant potatoes, vegetables or wheat, plant apple trees, and cultivate the land in any way he wants without any hindrance from the buried transmission cable. <laughs> The power transmission cable comes from the turbine house through cultivated fields, planted with wheat and barley, crossing the small river and through the field with the greenhouse up to the power house here. From here, the cable continues underground along the toilet and hot water shower room into the power room. This is the power house with all the power conditioning, management and distribution equipment. This is the armored power cable which comes underground from the turbine house transmitting the generated power as 300 volt direct current. All the power comes through a maximum current breaker fuse box into the power room. The main reasons for using underground cabling are to avoid wooden or metal poles, thus saving precious forest resources and avoiding expensive metal poles which often collapse under heavy snowstorms or wind gusts. Further, underground buried transmission cables provide much greater safety for people and animals from electricity related accidents. Charge controller number 1 is connected to turbines 1 and 2. All three charge controllers have 300 volt direct current input and 48 volt direct current output to the direct current to alternating current or DC to AC inverters and to the 48 volt DC battery bank. We have installed 175 ampere maximum current breakers for security and protection of the power bank. The power lines to the DC to AC inverters of phase 1 2 and 3. This is the phase 1 DC to AC inverter which takes 48 volt DC and converts it to 230 volt AC electricity. So we have three lines of electricity L1, L2 and L3 which we call phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3. For the 230 volt AC electricity distribution line we consider the village has two parts, one in the east and the other in the west. Electricity transmitted to the western side of the village is controlled with this MCB and the electricity transmitted to the eastern part of the village is controlled with this MCB. Further, in this box is also an MCB that protects the power needed for the water heating system for the shower room, which is one of the various smart dump loads, heating water for personal hygiene for all people working and staying in the community house. The water is heated whenever there is more power available after the village's electricity demands have been met. This PC is in particular for the prepayment pay-as-you-go system. That means that each family has to come at the beginning of every new month and pay for the electricity in advance, so that they can have uninterrupted electricity throughout the coming month. Good morning. What's the reason for coming today? I want to pay for next month's electricity. Now I enter your smart meter's number to make sure we add the new electricity token to your house meter. For how much money do you want to purchase electricity for the coming month? I want to purchase for 330 rupees electricity. Okay, please give me the money. Is your name Jaya Buddha? Yes, that's right. My name is Jaya Buddha. Okay, that is correct. So let's now print your new token for the next month's electricity for 330 rupees. See? This is your printed slip with the token number for the paid electricity for the next month. This token number you have to enter in your house into your display pad which looks like a calculator. Once you input the token number it is visible in the display. Then press the enter button. If you enter the number correctly, your lights will be on for as many units you paid for in advance for the next month. When no balance is left, the user has to purchase again a new token in order to have uninterrupted access to electricity. In this way, each family can decide for themselves how much electricity they need and can afford to pay for. The more electricity they use, the more units they have to purchase in advance. Further, 
The modular Pico Hydro Power Plant can provide additional energy services such as room heating and water heating. That is the case when, for example, the village does not need all the power generated, for example during the day when most people are working outdoors or are in the fields, and thus there is more instant power available. The computer system recognizes that immediately and diverts the leftover power to different smart dump loads such as the room heaters in the community house or in the water heaters for the hot water shower rooms. If there is still more excess power available after all energy demands have been met, a high altitude biogas digester plant is heated inside to improve the anaerobic digestion process to produce more biogas. The powerhouse and community house constructed in Mohari village is for the local people to take part in and to conduct different creative learning activities. This includes activities such as non-formal education for people, often women and out-of-school girls who have never had the chance to go to school and learn the basics. Further, it includes awareness and teaching videos for all local people through different audio and visual tools, like the videos Ritz created over the years as well as programs to learn new manual and practical skills useful to participate in the development of their own community. The community center is also Ritz Nepal's research and community development center. Research projects and activities with students from Nepal and from around the world take place with a special focus to study and develop new concepts of long-term, holistic and sustainable community development projects and activities, as well as the use of and application of renewable energy resources through contextualized renewable energy technologies for improved access to energy services in development projects. These are some of the major issues in the fields of community development research which need to be undertaken to find more efficient and more sustainable approaches to address the sustainable development goals in the years to come, addressing such issues as the eradication of poverty and improved access to energy services in more practical, dignified and realistic ways. This also leads to new opportunities and chances for local communities to get engaged in new income generating activities, enabling them more and more to stand on their own feet and taking the task of development more and more in their own hands. The community center serves as well for visitors and tourists interested in coming to Nepal to experience firsthand in a new way the differences and values of an intercultural way of life in the midst of the unique ecosystem of the high altitude Himalayan mountains. By learning more about the local culture, the indigenous way of life, and by sharing one's own way of life and background, valuable life lessons can be learned from each other, establishing new friendships based on a better mutual understanding and respect, an important lesson the world needs urgently for its future. To be a bridge between cultures and people groups for the common good of all is the main reason why this community center in Mohari village has been built. Mm -hmm.